All right, it says we are live streaming on Facebook. And hello to those of you who are here on Zoom. Hello, hello. I'm delighted to be here with you. I also want to just acknowledge Cindy Harley, who's here supporting. She is such a huge support for all of us who are part of the quantum human design community. So I always like to acknowledge her. She's behind the scenes, but you'll hear her voice as we go along. Um, I also want to acknowledge Karen Curry Parker, who is a friend and my mentor, and she's the creator of this quantum um, uh, um, um, alignment show. And so she generously um, offers to those of us who are, you know, students of hers to be able to share with you. So I'm really honored to be able to do this. And um, I appreciate you, Karen, um, for the opportunity. So welcome today to activate the superpowers of your throat and your sacral. You can't see me point to my sacral down here. <laughs> um, two of the most significant uh, um, centers that we have in the chart. And so we're going to take a, a dive into the superpowers of those um, of those centers and then also some of the challenges uh, that people experience um, related to those uh, energy centers. So what we're going to do today is I'm going to just introduce this topic of superpowers a little bit, give you a little bit of an orientation to how I approach human design and what my um, experience uh, is with it. I'll tell you a little bit about myself. Uh, then we're going to dive into talking about the throat center and all of the different kinds of throats that there are and uh, the superpowers and some of the challenges of them. Then we'll dive into talking about the sacral center, which is very different than the throat center, but also very, very significant um, in everyone's life, whether you have it defined or not. And, um, and then the, you know, the superpowers of that, some of the challenges of that. And then I will share with you about uh, a program that I'm just opening up today called Activate Your Superpowers, which includes all of the kind of the key elements of human design of the chart. So uh, I'll be telling you more about that towards the end. All right. So um, I want to start out just by doing a couple of little polls. Now, if you're watching us here on Facebook, if you can just put your response into the comment section, uh, that would be great because that way and I'll be able to go back and look at them later. So I'm going to launch this poll. And this is just what's your human design type. Um, and so if you can just go ahead and pick your type. And if you don't know, just pick. I don't know. <laughs> And that's okay too. If you know this is new for you and you're just starting out, that's actually perfect. Um, that's great. So, all uh, right, well, our poll is still um, coming in here. Uh, it's helpful for us to for me to just get a little bit of a sense. Okay, I think that we got pretty much our responders here. So we've got peer generators are about 24% of our audience. Manifesting generators are 32%. Projectors are 21% and manifestors are 12. We don't seem to have any reflectors with us. And then we have 12% who don't know yet. Um, I'm not gonna be able to tell you what your type is today, but I hope that you will go and get your chart and find out. Okay, perfect. So this is um, fairly close to what we see in the population at large, maybe not quite as many um, generators as, um, let's see, can I put that up so you can see that? Okay, I think maybe y'all can see that somewhere. I'm not sure. Okay. Um, and then I have another one. Um, that's poll number one. Okay, great. So that gives me a little bit of an idea of who's here. Um, okay, and then um, how confident are you with your human design strategy? Do you know what your human design strategy is? And if you know what it is, how much of the time do you use it? Is it like, yeah, I heard about it once, but I kind of don't really know how to use it or I don't use it. Um, and okay, this is great, some of the time. Okay, I don't know what it is. Yeah, if you don't know your type, you're not going to know your strategy. So don't worry about that. Um, there's a few of you that use it 100% of the time. Awesome. Um, and more of you who use it some of the time and some not, um, more or less. Okay, 
That's about what I would have thought. But I'm really glad to see that a majority of you are using at least some of the time and some of the, you 100% of the time. Um, and then for those of you who don't know, when you find out, that's going to be a real treat for you. All right. So let me just um, share those results so that you can see them. So some of the time is the, is the number one. All right. And then I just have one more that um, has to do just just so I get a little bit of a sense here of who is here on the line. Do you have your own business, your own practice? Do you work for someone else? Um, or are you currently unemployed? I think we have more unemployed people now than we used to, given the pandemic. Um, but um, I, that's also changing right now to some degree. Okay, so most of you have your own business, your own practice. Okay, very good. So, you know, solopreneurs or small business owners, that's great. Um, it's also awesome if you work for someone else, particularly if you enjoy working for whoever it is that you're working for. And some of you are currently unemployed. Okay, so those of you on Facebook, if you can go ahead and just put in your human design type, if you know, or your um, on your strategy, how much of the time you use it, and then are you do you have your own business? Are you working on your own? Um, do you work for someone else? Or are you currently unemployed? Okay, so I'm just going to share these results so you can see that too. So majority of the folks here are um, people who have their own business or practice, um, and then we're kind of evenly split between people who work for each other and those who are unemployed. Okay, great. That is. Um, Gives us, it just gives me a little bit of an idea of, you know, where you're all at with human design. So when I dive in, I have a sense of um, what I, um, you know, who I'm talking to. Okay. So one of the things I want to say uh, is uh, if you're new to this or if it's, um, you know, either, either brand new or you still feel new, <laughs> Um, try not to let the technicalities of what I share with you today be your dominant experience because you can get overwhelmed with that. If I talk about some of the technical aspects of the system, try to take in the essence of what I'm sharing. And that's what you can take away with you and also what you, how you can utilize the essence of what I'm talking about. Because human design is only really beneficial to you if you can take in what you learn and then you can implement it into your life and you can integrate it into your life. That's where the real magic lies. Uh, it's not in just getting the information about this beautiful esoteric system. Um, then it's just another thing that you have learned, but it's not necessarily uh, something that's going to help you in your life. So for me and my orientation to human design, I'm really, really focused on helping participants in my programs and my clients um, people who come to webinars to be able to transform their lives with human design, to be able to get onto their evolutionary path and to move through it with greater ease and greater effectiveness with human design, not just to learn the particularities of the system. And it can be easy, especially if you're um, a first line um, uh, or you have the gate 48, if you know what that means, um, so to just kind of want to learn, 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 learn. But, uh, and that's great too, but we want to dive in and really um, understand. So just a couple of things about how I focus on human design. And I think that in large part, I'm very aligned with Karen in this, but it's one of the things that, it, that sets me apart from other people and how they, um, how they do human design. So I really focus on your strengths, which is why I talk about superpowers. Um, one of my participants in, in the program that I'm gonna to talk to you about today just shared with me the other day where she took it last summer. And she said, you know, I really love the way that you focused on on our strengths because it drew me in and it made me be able to start using the material right away as opposed to a more general course that she had just been doing. So the way that I see the system is, is it highlights and illuminates all of these different energies. There's over a hundred different archetypes in the system. And it shows us where if we're um, embracing the lower aspects, they can be real liabilities for us on our life. Whereas we can shift that over so that it can be an asset for us when we understand what the more awakened aspect of that, um, whatever that archetype is in the system. And then it can even become a superpower when we master it and really know how to use it. So that's what I 
offer to people in all of my programs? How do you take the uh, liabilities that you may have had? I used to think I had character flaws, okay? I used to think that there were things about my behavior that were character flaws that when I came to human design, I realized, no, I'm actually just, I don't understand how to work with that energy. So it's kind of working me. So what you want to be able to do is understand the energies well enough so that you're in command of them rather than them running you around. And that can happen really with anything. We're going to talk about that when we, particularly when we get to the throat. Um, we all have the entire chart, whether you, it's colored into your chart or whether it is um, uh, white in your chart, you still have access to those energies and you experience all of them. Um, openness can be a superpower and definition can be a liability. There's no absolutes about that. I know some people teach it that way, but that's actually not true. I, and that hasn't been true in my personal experience or with my um, with my clients. Um, and we can always grow and evolve. Nothing is set in stone. Absolutely nothing is set in stone. Some things are easier to change than others, uh, but uh, everything can be changed. So I want to invite you to, um, if you haven't already, to go ahead. I created a worksheet to support you as we go through this material today. I think it's really helpful when you write down some of your insights. You're probably not going to fill in the whole thing today. I know a number of you went and got it ahead of time. That's just great. If you haven't gotten it already, Cindy, can you please put, okay, Cindy, just put the, um, the URL into the chat. Um, and for those of you on Facebook, she'll put it into the comments. It's just sovereigntybydesign.com forward slash superpowers worksheet, all one word. So it's sovereigntybydesign.com, which is my website, forward slash superpowers worksheet. So go ahead and get that now. Uh, and if you can print it out, that's best, but you can also follow along and kind of look at the questions and then do it later if that's gonna work better for you. Okay, so let's go ahead. Let me just see if there was anything else. I think that was um, basically what I wanted to share with you before. I do have slides that I want to um, go through. Oh, hi, Nanette. <laughs> um, Nanette took a class with me last year. Great, thank you for sharing that. Um, yeah, please do share any of your insights, your ahas, your questions, whatever it is, and we will have time for that. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. I think this is going to work. There we go. Okay, so this is our um, class for today, Activate the Superpowers of Your Throat and Your Sacral Centers. Um, so that you can access all of uh, the power and energy you need to create what you want in your life. Now, isn't that what you want, right? <laughs> totally. So when you get the worksheet, you can go ahead and put in your type, your strategy, and your authority if you know what they are. Um, if you don't, that's okay. You just follow along and um, you'll get um, pretty much what you need um, through that. All right, so let me just share a little bit about myself. So I am a human design specialist. Um, I'm certified at level four. Uh, I have studied both tr um, traditional human design and quantum human design with Karen, and I feel very honored and blessed to have trained with her. Uh, I started out my adult life uh, as an academic. I got a PhD. I got a teaching job at Columbia University. I was the director of women's and gender studies there uh, for five years before I realized that I really, I was really unhappy and I was getting really burned out and I didn't know why. And it was very difficult for me. It was kind of one of those moments where, you know, everything in your life just starts to crumble and you're not sure why. Maybe some of you have experienced Experience that you can make a note of that in the chat if you want. Um, and because I grew up in an academic family and it was everything that I knew. Uh, but it was a blessing in the end because what I learned with human design <laughs> was I'm not designed to work for anybody else. And I could feel it while I was in the academy, even though I had this great job at Columbia. 
I, I still, I mean, I said to myself at one point, all institutions are patriarchal and I don't want to be in one. Uh, I discovered later with human design that I have a lot of individual circuitry and I'm not really designed to fit in and I'm not designed to be a part of an institution. So I have been on my own for almost 25 years now. I've had four different businesses since then, um, all of which have focused either in wellness or in uh, personal growth and uh, also in business coaching for people in the transformational fields. And uh, it's been a, a very um, lucrative and wild ride over these years. And uh, until I came to human design, I had burned out multiple times. I am a person that has a lot of energy. I'm a pure generator and I do uh, really have a lot of energy, but I can burn myself out. So just out there to you manifesting generators and your generators, if you're not living according to your design, you still can burn yourself out. And so this is one of those things to understand about the sacral, which we'll dive into later, is, is that it's inexhaustible provided you're taking care of yourself and you're living according to your strategy and using your authority. So I discovered that many years later. And when I first came to human design, I actually dismissed it. This was about, I don't know, 10 years ago, because I thought, I'm designed to respond. I don't think so. I have been initiating my entire life. And uh, so I just dismissed it. I was like, it was wrong. And then when I had uh, um, burned out again, I went, oh, actually maybe there's something to this. And when I embraced it and thought about, well, what does it even mean to respond? <laughs> like, I didn't even know what that meant. Um, so maybe some of the, when you discovered you were generators or pure uh, manifesting generators had that kind of like, huh? Uh, but what I've discovered is that learning to respond has been a huge gift and blessing to me and that it has made everything in my life easier and learning to use my authority. Now, this class is not about, about type and strategy and authority, but I want to just emphasize it because it is the foundation of everything that you get in human design. And it's the first thing that you want to focus on. And in the program that I have on Activate Your Superpowers, we have classes on each of those. Uh, but today I wanted to really dive into um, some specifics that I thought could help you. And for me, learning about the throat and learning about the sacral were huge, uh, you know, epiphanies for me that really uh, liberated me in a lot of ways. And so uh, that was why I wanted to share these specifically with you today. Now, one thing I want to say is that uh, it's dangerous <laughs> to a degree to do what I'm gonna to do today. Because the chart, like let's just go to this slide where you can see, so this is the human design mandala um, with what we, the body graph is in the center. You know, usually you just see what the body graph is, but this is the entire chart with the mandala. And uh, it, it's a complex system and it's dangerous just to take a piece of it and talk about it because when you're someone's doing a reading for you they want to be able to look at the whole thing because all the different parts are going to relate to each other and there are themes that emerge in a good professional reading and so i want to just have that caveat today as I go into the throat and the sacral to know that these are just two of nine centers. There are actually nine centers in the human design uh, system. And that's only two out of the nine. Uh, I think in some ways they're the two most significant or when the G center is right up there. Uh, but even so, th they're a little bit taking out of context here. Okay. So just know that. So as we go through the centers, I just want to let you know that there are um, five, not what we call non-motor centers or non-energy centers. Uh, they are of a different sort. And then there are four motors. Now, knowing what the four motors are is important for you as you're looking at your chart to see what your, um, what your type is and how your type gets created. So um, you'll notice that the throat center is here. It's, a, it's not a motor itself. It's more of a gearbox or a wheelhouse. It's the place where um, it's, it's where most 
the highest number of channels go through the throat center and energy comes in from the head and the ajna into the throat. It goes around the system, back up into the throat. It comes up from the earth, from the root into the system and then out to the throat. So it's not an energy center itself, but whether or not it's re it's connected to an, a power source, right? One of these four motors is what um, makes the difference in what kind of a throat you have. So the throat um, center is the center for expression, uh, ob right? Obviously it's where we talk, okay? Um, and for communication, because this is how we're expressing. Uh, and then also for initiation. Many times the throat center gets talked about as the center for manifestation. I just wanna make a distinction here because I think it's an important distinction that the uh, initiating is not actually the same as manifesting. The throat center is the center for initiating, okay? And that's why um, manifestors are the initiators in quantum human design because they have a power source connected directly to the throat and that makes them initiators. Manifesting generators have a... Um, energy source going directly to the throat. It could go through another center, but it's still going to go to the throat. Um, and uh, But that enables them to initiate. And we can initiate, uh, and that is kind of the foundation of manifesting. But my experience is, is you can initiate quite a bit and not necessarily manifest. And so I want to make that distinction because what human design teaches us is how do we initiate? It's not just get an idea, go do it, okay? Not even for manifestors. This is in my view, okay? Having had a number of close people in my life be manifestors, I feel that I've learned some things about how manifestors operate uh, that can make them more effective in their lives. So you might wanna, if you're looking at your worksheet here, you might wanna write down what kind of a center is the throat center? Why is it so important? Um, and then let me share what the object of the game. If human design was a game, we like to say the object is to get energy to the throat because when you get energy to the throat, that's when it facilitates your uh, communication, facilitates your expression and also your ability to initiate and ideally to that to also manifest okay so let me show you a little bit here what I mean by this so here's the throat center right but we, we know that the throat center is here here are um, two of the uh, motors um, and here's the third one so if, if, the, if, if it's the root, it has to go up here through the spleen. Um, and it, it, here the will center is directly connected or the emotional solar plexus. It could also go through the G center. So you can have the energy go from the will up um, into the G, into the throat and, and through the spleen and up. So there's a variety of different ways that manifestors can get that. Manifesting generators, now don't get overwhelmed by these couple of slides here. You can allow them just to pass you by. But if you are a manifestor or manifesting generator, you might wanna understand this piece, which is, which motor gets to your throat, okay? Now, the um, manifesting generator has the sacral defined. So the fastest channel, um, most powerful channel we have is known as the 3420. A lot of manifesting generators have this. But you can also have it come in a variety of other ways. So you might want to just play around with that and looking at your own chart, and you can put this on the on the worksheet, which is to say, okay, do I, is my um, throat, is it colored in? Is it motorized? Okay, it'll be motorized if you're a manifestor or manifesting generator if you're if it's colored in but it's not um you're not you're a generator or you're a projector then you have a defined throat but not a motorized throat and if it's white then you have an open throat i have a white open throat so i'm going to go through um, the content on these different types of throats okay so the superpowers of motorized throats, this is about 40% of the population um, have motorized throats. Um, I actually think it's more like 37%, but anyway, it's close enough. So uh, this is someone who has this power coming to the throat and has this ability uh, to express. So some of the superpowers are this ability to initiate, um, to be articulate, and also to often to be very influential. 
um, expresses and acts quickly and consistently. There's a lot of leadership here and the ability for storytelling. So there's a number of storytelling gates in the throat. The, the two main leadership gates are on the throat. Uh, and so that, depending on uh, what your relationship to those energies are, those can be really well um, expressed when you have a, mo um, a, 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 def a motorized throat. Now, just to make a distinction between manifestors and manifesting generators, manifesting generators are still generators and their power is coming from that sacral and the sacral works best in response. So just for you to know as a manifesting generator, even though you do have this initiating and this manifesting power that you do well also still to respond, which basically means that when you get an impulse, right, you have an inspiration that comes in from non-physical or your some part of your heart or your creative center, um, your emotional center brings like an inspiration, an idea, a, a hunch um, for you to move forward with something, right? You still want to be able to kind of check it out and see is there something in your outer reality that's reflecting back to you that yes, and then to use your authority, right? You use your sacral um, authority to be like, oh, uh-huh, yeah, I should move forward with this or not. Uh, I've talked to a lot of manifesting generators who kind of, you know, they've been in this mode of I get an idea and I go. And their experience is, is that it's really uneven. Their results are really uneven. Sometimes it works out great and other times it just falls flat. So that can happen for manifesting generators. It can happen for manifestors too, if they're not tuning in to right timing. All of us need to be tuning into right timing because the best idea, the best project offered at the wrong time isn't gonna go anywhere. Um, and the other thing for manifestors in particular, but also for manifesting generators is, is it the right time for you? Even though you get an idea and even though the impulse around it has some, some charge to it, right? You want to see, do I actually have the energy to go into this um, and to do it now? Because maybe it's for something later. And manifestors uh, can totally burn themselves out. I have some really good friends who, you know, like in their 50s were literally flat on their backs because they used too much sacral energy, honestly. So um, so that's just one of the things to, to check out. But if you do have a motorized throat, you want to see which of the channels um, are activated and which of the motor is connected to your throat. So you can write that down on your worksheet because that's going to influence the kind of energy that you have. Like if you have the 3420 that connects the sacral to the, to the throat, um, that's pure power going to your throat. Okay. That's going to give it a certain kind of energy. Whereas if it's the emotional solar plexus coming and, and um, defining your throat, then that is going to give you more emotional energy and the ability to express your emotions, but also the creative Creativity that comes with the emotional um, solar plexus. So I'm not going to go into more details about this, but that's one of the things I wanted to give you the worksheet for was for you to be able to go, oh, how does that actually work for me in my chart? Um, and I would say, look for the gate 31 and the gate 45, which are the leadership gates. Do you have those um, uh, in, defined in your chart or not? Okay. So the some of the challenges of the motorized throat. Um, one of the things that Ra used to say is that the manifestors are the dictators of the of time gone by. Um, and he could say this because he was an ego manifester. <laughs> and I think he recognized some of that energy in himself, right? And in the people around him. So the, the challenges that you can have with a motorized throat um, is, is that you can be overbearing and domineering, particularly, you know, if you have some of that real power going directly to your throat. This is one of the places manifesting generators, if they have that 3420, man, they can just be like, um, but this can be true for manifestors also. Um, because it's defined and it's motorized, it can be kind of fixed and it can even become rigid and make you not very flexible, which means that let's say it's your um, emotional solar plexus that's going to your throat. You're used to just expressing through that energy of that emotional solar plexus. And you're not as open, for example, to express through the G center. Like if, if the energy was coming up through the sacral, through the G center, which is going to be more about identity and more about love. 
okay? Um, or if the energy is coming from the root up through the spleen into your throat, that's gonna give you that um, um, intuitive energy that's coming up um, through, through the spleen. So you wanna take a look at that and see, you know, are, 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 do you kind of get a, a little bit rigid in the way that you communicate? Um, sometimes you can have difficulty listening people who have this because there's so there's so much energy wanting to come out and express that it can be hard for them to just slow down and listen right and of course listening is a vital maybe even a more vital part of communication than speaking is um, sometimes people with this can be overrun by the speed and the power of the energy that is trying to come out of the throat uh, and this is particularly true if you fall in love with that power, right? If you get seduced by it, then you can be run by it. So you want to start to pay attention if you have a motorized throat to uh, do you listen to other people? Do you make space for other people to speak? Do you wait for the right time? Um, are you uh, allowing yourself to be flexible in the way that you communicate? Uh, are you able to grab a hold of that power and harness it, but decide when to express it rather than it running you, which is what can happen. And that can happen with any of the kind of big powerful parts of the chart. What I like to say is learn to manage that energy or it will manage you. And I have done readings for more uh, manifesting generators whose power is running them um, and that they need to learn how to harness that energy so that it's not um, in charge. You are, <laughs> right? Okay. So defined throats are almost half the population, okay? Um, these are some generators and some um, projectors. Um, and the people who have this can be, um, uh, you know, can be great teachers, they can be great speakers, um, they, can, they can definitely express. So they have a number of the similar qualities that um, motorized throats, okay, which is that they can express and they can act consistently and sustainably. Um, they can be very articulate and very um, influential. Excellent speakers, teachers, singers, um, and then they also can have special abilities that come from whatever center is connecting to their throat. So whether that's the G center, right, which is right here, and that can connect to the throat, or the Ajna, which then connects to the throat, um, or the spleen, which then connects to the throat. So whichever of the centers, there's a channel that goes from that center to the throat that then the throat is defined, um, you're going to have special abilities for that. So you might want to look if you have that to on your worksheet is to, is to write down what are the specific gates and channels that are involved in defining your throat. Uh, so for example, let's say you have um, the one eight, which is going from the G center into the throat. Okay, that is a center for self-expression, for your purpose, for your contribution to the world, and it has a lot to do with your identity. So you can be very sensitive if that's the channel that's defining your throat, because what you're sharing is a lot about who you are. Uh, and so knowing that can be helpful for you to be like, oh, okay, so what do I need to do when I'm expressing myself to know that um, I can be the most effective possible? So the main thing about having a defined throat as opposed to having a motorized throat is one is, is you just don't have the same amount of power <laughs> coming into, into that expression. And so you may not have as long um, an energy in terms of utilizing it as somebody who does does have that motorized, but the other thing is, is it needs to be uh, it needs to be recognized or what we say called out in human design because it's projected. It's not um, an, an, an it's not a, um, a a motorized energy. So what can happen? Uh, so so all of these things, all of these superpowers are really available to you when your uh, your expression is uh, asked for. It's either asked for or it's recognized. Or if you say, I have something I'd like to share, would you like to hear it? Okay. Um, or if somebody is saying, oh, I'd love to hear your opinion on that. Uh, so you don't always have to just wait for someone to ask you, but you do want to make sure that there's um, 
uh, a, a recognition. So like, uh, yeah, so uh, that's all I'm gonna say about that for now. Okay, so the, um, the potential challenges <laughs> For defined throats is you can get rigid like this young woman here okay is you can get again you can have that fixed way of expressing or acting you can get inflexible again that's what can happen with any definition is is that you become less flexible because it's your way of expressing or your way of expressing whatever that energy is can become consistent and even fixed um, you do need to be called out or recognized. Um, otherwise, it can be annoying. Like if somebody with a divine, uh, a defined throat um, speaks up and really wants to share, but people aren't ready to hear it, it can be really annoying or they cannot be heard. This is similar to people with open throats. And oftentimes people with this defined throat, they can really take offense with um, other people getting annoyed by them or not being heard because they don't understand it because it's a lot of the time their expression is wanted and desired, um, but then sometimes it's not. And, and if you don't understand human design and you don't know how to kind of set up situations so that you're asked to express um, and to share your wisdom and um, your gifts, then you can get kind of, you know, frustrated, disappointed, bitter, you know, any of those kind of um, negative emotions that go with the different types because you're trying, you're trying to get attention um, and people are like, it's not, it's not the right time or not the right place or not the right people. Okay. So you want to be able to maximize the superpowers and for whether it's motorized or it's defined, and this is also going to be true with the open throats, is it needs to be at the, with the right people at the right time in the right situation. This is one of the biggest, biggest gifts we get from human design is to become attuned to that and not allow the energy that we have to run over us. Now, open throats, open throats get a bad rap. I have to say, um, only about 12 and a half percent of us have open throats. I have an open throat. For some reason, I seem to attract people into my practice <laughs> who have open throats. Maybe it's because I have one too. But I want you to know that open throats, when you understand them, can totally have superpowers. Now, let me just say a little bit here about definition and openness, which is that what, whatever is colored in in your chart, you're going to have a consistent um, and relatively fixed way of experiencing that energy. Okay. I think I'm going to sneeze here. Hold on a second. Um, that's what I mean by the potential of becoming rigid, right? Is, your, is that you have a groove and you're used to expressing that way. OK, that's true for any of the energies in the chart. Uh, and, what, and when it's open, you have experienced the energies, uh, all the energies of the throat many, many different times, depending on who you're around. And um, and I know for me, I have nine gates that are either hanging off the throat or are pointing to the throat from other centers. So it's easy for my throat to get defined depending on whom I'm around. And when I'm in a teaching situation or a speaking situation like this, my throat is getting defined many different ways by all of you because I'm picking up on your energy. And yes, it does ha happen through the internet. But for example, I've done a lot of speaking on stage. Uh, I've done, you know, run retreats. I've done um, you know different types of teaching situations in person and when that happens I become more articulate than I am at other times um, and I can be very flexible and facile in my speaking depending on the situation because I can pick up and utilize the energies of any of the centers that connect to the throat, which is basically all of them, depending on the how the circuitry is, is working. Okay, so I get a huge amount of energy from all of you when I am speaking. And this is true for any of you that have open throats. And so the gift of this is that you're not locked into one way of expressing um, and that you can actually be like, I, I channel a lot of em em uh, information when I am speaking very often. Um, uh, depending on again the situation um and you know they you can be a very powerful channel if you have this open because the energy from non-physical can come in and right out through that open throat 
Uh, and so check that out for yourself if you have an open throat, if you, if you find yourself, you know, either hearing or having information wanting to come through you. It can be really great creative partners because we can pick up on, you know, most people have defined throats, right? So we can pick up the energy of their throat and amplify it. That's what openness does is you pick up energy and you amplify it. And so you can send that energy back to people and it can be very dynamic dynamic like when I've had creative partnerships it's been off the charts because of the dynamic relationship between someone else's defined throat and how that stimulates me and then for what they receive because there's different kinds of energy coming in and through me uh, as a result of that openness um, now there are definitely um challenges to the open throat. And I experienced a lot of them before I came to human design and before I realized what uh, was really happening. So the thing about open throats is sometimes um, we can just feel like nobody's listening to us. Okay. So we can blurt things out. We can try to get um, uh uh, attention inappropriately, sometimes by speaking up louder or busting into a conversation <laughs> or talking over somebody else. Because what happens is we get around other people and all of a sudden our throats get defined. And so then we like start blurting things out, right? If any of you might want to just say, yes, that's happened to me in the comments or in the chat, if you've experienced that, or, or, or if you know people with open throats and you've experienced it from them. Um, the other side of it is, is you can just feel shut down. Like, like, you know, this one, the one I just showed you, she's like, she just can't even say anything because she can't get the words out. She just can't quite feel it. Right. Um, and so that can make you feel invisible. And, and the thing is, is you can go back and forth between the two. Like I know that I have felt both in the past. Sometimes like I was invisible. Nobody saw me, nobody heard me. And other times where I acted inappropriately to try to get attention. And then I was really annoying to other people, you know, offensive even. <laughs> So just know if you have an open throat and you do, you like, this is what I was talking about before, about the feeling before, like I had character flaws. Like I thought this was a character flaw, but what I've been able to do now that I understand is I was able to take these energies and turn them into a superpower by realizing that with an open throat, I can actually remember OK, what it's like, like, for example, what it's like to be talking to you today after I leave. And this is a tip that you can do for yourself is if you have an open throat or any openness that you want to remember, this will be true for sacrals as well, is you when you're when you move out of that energy, try to remember what it felt like and then imprint yourself positively with what that energy felt like. Because then you can call it up for yourself when you're on your own. You won't be able to sustain it because you're not des designed to sustain it. Like, I know I can't sustain it. But when I go to create programs, for example, or writing my book or writing my blogs or shooting my videos or whatever that is that's requiring that kind of energy that the throat brings, I remember what it's like to talk to all of you. And that enables me to do that. Okay. Um, so openness can totally be a superpower for you. And this is true with anywhere in the chart when you learn how to use it. Okay. I'm going to take a sip of water. Um, hmm. Let's all take a stretch and wiggle a little bit. And then we're going to move on to the sacral. Okay. I just want to invite you to put any ahas. I see there's a lot going on in the chat, which is awesome. And I will um, get back to that, um, to the chat. Uh, but um, yeah, just include any ahas in here or questions that you have, and we'll come back to that. All right. So let's move on to the, um, to the sacral. Okay. So the sacral is the most powerful engine in the chart. Okay. Uh, it is the center for life force energy, um, for the energy for work and for building. Like I consider myself a builder, uh, um, a creator, a builder and for sexuality, sex and sexuality um, and for creative life force energy, right? Life force and sexuality are fundamentally creative energies. This is the energy that we need to, to create in the world. Okay. About 66% of us have it defined. If you've got it defined, if it's colored in, in your chart, you're either a generator or a manifesting generator. 
that's just how it is. It, it doesn't go any other way. Um, and so this can give you a huge amount of energy. And um, the, the thing is, is it's not inexhaustible. Uh, I mean, I, like I said, I burn myself out multiple times. I have talked to manifesting generators who have burned themselves out multiple times, because if we're not honoring the fact that we all need rest, and also if we're acting like um, we're initiating too much and not using our strategy of responding, uh, then we can really burn ourselves out. Okay. And unfortunately, we've all kind of been trained to work that way. So it takes a lot of deprogramming for us. Like I said, really early on here, like when I first came to human design, I was like, this is bogus, right? <laughs> because, you know, that's not how I've been trained to work. So Life force energy, yay! That's what we get from the sacral, okay? So um, it is uh, the energy to create, the energy to build. When we are on purpose, okay, and when we do know how to rest, because even generators need it to rest, um, we can be virtually unstoppable, and it be, and it creates virtually inexhaustible energy. It really is huge, and. I'm also a certified um, radiant body yoga teacher, which includes Kundalini yoga. If any of you are familiar with that. Um, and one of the things in that practice is we're constantly stimulating the energy of what we call the navel, but that's the sacral in human design because we know that that's the power center, right? So we're constantly feeding it in Kundalini yoga, which is awesome. Um, this is also... Um, uh, supports potent sexuality. Um, and it's also the energy for reproduction and for family, like the, the channels that are, you know, that are in the defense circuit that are all about, uh, it's tribal energy, it's all about family and reproduction and tribal energy runs through the sacral. And so that's where the energy for that comes. Um, and some people who are, who, um, who don't have defined sacrals can be envious of this energy, which is understandable. I mean, it's a huge gift, but there are ways for people who don't have it defined to utilize it. So we'll talk about that in a minute. Okay, so um, the potential challenges for people who have it um, uh, defined is, um, this is frustration, okay? This is the frustration of the generator and the manifesting generator, either when you're not living according to your strategy or when you're in the wrong work, okay? This is one of the things that can happen is, is that generators and manifesting generators, because we have so much energy to work, is we can get stuck in doing the wrong work for too long. So those of you who are working for other people, you want to really check that out for yourself. Make sure you're doing the right work and then you're not just slaving away um, because you feel like that's what you need to do. Unfortunately, with... Um, uh, um, generators and manifesting generators, we can totally do this because we can kind of work even when, even when it's not right, because we have a lot of energy, but it makes us really frustrated. Okay. And over, we can also overwork. I used to do this. I used to just exhaust myself. Um, and I, I when I came to Hizem and Design, I realized I needed to, to learn how to rest. I, I was like, wow, I don't even know how to rest. I know how to work until I collapse. <laughs> That's my pattern, okay? Um, and I, I've worked with lots of people for whom this is true. So check that out for yourself if you have a habit of doing that. Um, so, uh, and if you're initiating too much, it can definitely cause burnout. Um, and we can also, let's face it, we can judge other people uh, for being lazy um, if they're not, because they're not like us, right? And I, you know, my apologies to all the, the projectors, um, particularly projectors and reflectors, not so much for manifestors, sometimes for manifestors, but especially for projectors and reflectors, because y'all need rest way more than we do. And you need downtime, you need time on your own. And I, I, it's really helped me have a lot more compassion for other people than I used to have. So open sacral centers. So there's, Definitely some cool superpowers that you have as an open um, sacral, a non-sacral being. So one is, is that you're living in a generator world, okay? So you're going to be surrounded by generators and manifesting generators. So you can pick up that energy and amplify it in the short term. That can make manifestors and projectors super um, powerful for a short period of time. The thing is, is it's not sustainable because it's you're not designed 
have that energy in your system all the time. So, um, but in the short term, man, it can totally be a superpower for you. You just want to make sure that you're not relying on it. I'll come to that more when I talk about the challenges. Okay. It can amplify sexual energy. If you're with a generator, a manifesting generator, you can pick up on their energy and amplify it so that you can become extra sexy. Um, you can have a fluid a way of being sexual because if you're not fixed in a certain, um, a, a certain way, people who are sacral beings sometimes get a little more fixed in the way that they experience and express their sexuality. Whereas when you're open, you can have multiple sexual roles with different people or at different times in your life, or you can just experience, want to express your sexuality in different ways. So that can be really fun, right? For you and the, the partners in your life. Um, and sometimes they're smarter about rest and rejuvenation than people who are, are defined sacral beings because they realize, wow, I just, I can't keep up with the generators. God bless you, you know? Um, so that you can be smarter about that and it is good to, um, to check it out. So on your worksheet, um, you can um, just see whether you're, you have this colored in or not. Again, you'll want to look at what gates and what channels to de define your sacral center if you have it, because that will influence uh, how you experience that energy. Not quite the same way that as with the throat, um, because the sacral is such an incredible power center on its own, um, but it still will influence how you experience it. Now, the, um, the potential challenges here uh, uh, are <laughs> what, what you can see here is exhaustion. Okay, is it burnout is one of the biggest ones. Okay, so all of you projectors up there, your manifestors and your reflectors, you really need to pay attention to this. So one thing is, is you can get addicted to generator energy and that will fry your circuits over time because you're not designed to hold on to that much energy. So take it in doses, right? I mean, I, I have some really good friends or manifestors who literally on the couch in their fifties, just like they're so burned out um, because they rode that gener generator energy for like 20 years. Okay. And, but eventually it caught up with them and Okay, so you want to watch out for that. Sometimes you can have sexual dysfunction or just a lack of libido uh, in, in when you're open here. Um, and that's where, you know, you want to go and pick it up from other people, whether your partners are generators or manifesting generators or just being in public. I think this is one of the reasons people like to go to the club and dance, you know, if you're a non sacral being, because then you get to pick up that energy from other people and, you know, go home and utilize it before it runs off. <laughs> you can judge yourself when comparing yourself to generators and manifesting generators. Okay. Have any of you done that? You're like, I just don't seem to have as much energy as they do. Um, and you know what? You don't. And that's okay. <laughs> but you have to get used to that idea that it's okay. Um, sometimes it can be challenging having enough energy for child rearing um, and for working. You know, all the projectors that I um, coach uh, I, I'm just like, you're not designed to work 40 or 50 or 60 hours a week. You're just not. Um, and it, the sooner you learn that, the better. Sometimes it hits you in your 30s, sometimes in your 40s, sometimes in your 50s. So just better to be paying attention to that sooner than later. Okay, so let's just take another breath and a stretch. So in summary, um, let me just collect my thoughts here for a second. You can put any ahas or questions you have into the chat. Um, make a note for yourself about any of the superpowers you identify with, any of the challenges that you identify with over here on your worksheet. I'm just looking at what's on here. Um, yeah. And then if you do have this printed out, you can see, you know, what are these? Uh, uh, I have a whole list of bullets for things that you might identify with, which will help you see where you're kind of um, identifying more with the, the um, challenging part of these centers. Okay. Um, so just in summary, you want to always tune into right timing. And this is true for whether you have a defined sacral or not, whether you defi defined or motorized throat or not. You want to learn how to manage your energy, whatever your type is, whatever your definition or openness is. You want to learn how to manage it because like sacral beings can just get, get you know, become enslaved 
in effect, because they have so much energy that they can work in jobs that they hate for a long time. You don't want to have that happen. Um, and you also, if you're a, a non-sacral being, you want to be able to manage your energy so that you have as much energy as you want when you want and need it. But that means that you need to take care of yourself and you need to rest when you do. You need to have your self-care built in so that you're, um, you, you have the energy when you want and need it. Um, if you have a defined throat, you want to practice listening um, you, as much as speaking. Um, and if you have an open throat, you want to practice speaking so that you can be heard at the right time. Okay. Uh, and so you, again, with both, you're tuning into right timing. Is it the time for me to listen? Is it the time for me to speak? Uh, and if you are have an open throat, if it's the time to speak, to practice the speaking so that you don't blurt or ramble or just go on and on and on when you do get your throat defined by being around other people or you do get called out to speak, okay? So you wanna practice that. Um, if you're a sacral being, you want it to really see, am I doing the right work? And this can be if you're doing it in your own, your own business, okay? Because sometimes you're not doing the right work in your own business, that you're not, you don't get to escape that just because you have your own business. Sometimes people are really doing the wrong work in their own business. Um, and if you are um, uh, have an open sacral, you really want to be checking, are you resting enough? Are you rejuvenating enough? And are you being smart about when to use your energy and not just expending it and then collapsing and realizing, oh gosh, I don't have the energy I want for some of the things that I really care about so that you can you know, rejuvenate and cultivate your energy so that you do have all the energy you want for when you need it. So every challenge can be transformed into an opportunity, a benefit, and even a superpower when you understand your human design and how the energy is revealed by human design work. Okay, so you got a bit of a deep dive into the throat and into the sacral today. And of course, there is a lot more um, involved in the human design chart. So if you want to go deeper, I have a program that I just opened up today. If you want to go check it out, it's at sovereigntybydesign.com forward slash superpowers. And it is um, a course that introduces you to all of the key elements of the human design chart. Uh, this program is for people for either who are relatively new to human design, right? And they're like, wow, I really want an intro course. Um, and I love the idea of having one that is supported on superpowers. Or you have, are, you're more familiar with human design, but you're like, I really want to get to know more about the superpowers part. Because unfortunately, a lot of the ways that human design has been taught out there can be kind of negative. Um, and so... I really emphasize this other part and also, as I've talked about today, how you can take the parts that have been challenging and turn them into real assets for you. The basic curriculum is to um, read the, uh, understand the human design chart, your authority and your strategy, definition and openness, all of the human design types, the nine centers. We have a whole class on the motors and motorized throats, your incarnation cross, all the profiles, the free, three primary circuits, and the art of reading the chart. Um, plus, um, the people who took the class last time said I, they really want a class on the planet, so I'm going to add in a bonus class on the planets. Now, the thing that's cool about this is, is that if you do have clients, um, or even if you want to know how to use human design with your friends, um, in addition to coming to understand your own human design, it can also give you the fundamentals that you need to share some of this with your clients and with your friends. Uh, and, and it's not going to give you like what you would get if you did a professional training program like I did with Karen, but it will give you the fundamentals about type and strategy and authority, for example, and, and some of the things about the, uh, the centers and so on, so that you can just have these to, to work with your clients. I've had a number of the coaches take this so that they can work on it with their clients. It's been great. So what you get is you get 11 classes. They're delivered via video training. So you can do it when it's right for you. 
Um, and you also get audios in case you prefer to just pop it on your iPhone and, you know, go and walk around. Um, although the slides are really helpful. <laughs> and then there's slides and there's also worksheets. I always include worksheets just like I did here because you need to run the information through your system and apply it in order for it not just to be, oh, a little more information running by you, right? You need to actually take it and write it down and go, okay, how am I going to utilize this in my life now? Um, now this is a huge bonus, okay, is, and I don't think hardly anybody else does this. I know several people have told me that they haven't seen this and this amount of support in other classes, which is I give five laser coaching Q&A sessions uh, from June through September. There's two in June and then um, one a month and through September. And during these times, I will help you, uh, obviously I'll answer questions that you have regarding the course, but I also do little mini readings of people's charts um, on uh, in the Q&A sessions as well. Um, and uh, yeah, this one recent uh, client I, uh, participant said, she said, I so appreciate how generous you were with your time. The live sessions were so valuable and really helped me understand myself and my design. Uh, and so, and I just think it's vital because, you know, it's a complex system, right? And uh, you need to have some expert guidance about how to understand it, um, not just the information. So for those of you who do say, okay, I know I want to do this, I, uh, and you're going to say yes now, that I do have a special jumpstart session. Now that's in addition to all of the laser coaching sessions that's next Wednesday um, at 10 a.m. So you need to register by next Tuesday in order to participate um, in this jumpstart session. And then to make this really easy for those of you uh, who know that you know you have a feeling like this is a yes, um, uh, I'm give, gonna give you $300 off the um, registration price. So it's usually 597, um, but if you use this code, um, save 300, you'll get it for 297. There's also a payment plan, a three-part pay. Uh, with this bonus, we'll take it down to like $112 a month. So that's really reasonable for you to just get in and say yes now. Um, and then for the first seven of you who are like, yes, yes, you'll get a half hour reading with me as a bonus. So um, if you're feeling it, I would say go for it, sovereigntybydesign.com forward slash superpowers. Um, but the, for those of you who are emotionally defined, you have two weeks and to still get this $300 off and you have until next Tuesday to get that jumpstart session. So I honor all of you who have that um, who are emotionally defined. Okay, so that was what I wanted to share here. Cindy, if you, you probably have already done this, but if you could just make sure that that URL is in the, um, it's in both. In the chat. Mm -hmm. um, the code is save 300. Save 300 is the code. All right, so um, I want to take a few minutes to answer questions um, and yeah, wow, lots of information here in the chart, uh, uh, the chat, I love this. Cindy, can you help me with um, some questions? I uh, guess I saw some that were coming through. Let me go back, some of them, okay. Uh, what can we do to activate the superpowers of our throat and speckles? Well, when you know what the superpowers are, okay, so if you go, can go back and look at um, what I just was sharing with you. So like, for example, I'll just go back to that open throat example for me, right, was I realized that my tendency to try to get attention or to blurt or to not realize it wasn't the right time, right? Those were all making my open throat a liability for me. So when I learned that the superpower of the open throat is to actually pay attention to when my throat is getting defined and I have this impulse to express, which is what happens, right? When you're around other people, I learned to go, oh, I need to grab a hold of that energy so that I can and harness it so that it doesn't uh, run over me, which is what happens when you blurt, okay? You blurt because all of a sudden you have this energy to express, but you're not in charge of it. So it just runs out of your mouth. 
basically. Okay. Um, and so for any of you, like for the manifesting generators and the generators with the, with the defined throat, you want to also make sure that you're not being overbearing, that you're not being domineering, that you're not listening to anybody, that you're just running, you know, with the impulse that you get right? You want to be able to slow down and really pay attention so that when you do speak, that you're going to be influential, that you're not just, you know, I mean, I've run into more manifestors who are just kind of domineering because they don't know how to utilize that energy. And so they just try to be like in charge of stuff. And, you know, so that's how it's not a superpower. But when you're in charge of it and you're like, hmm, Okay, I'm going to make sure this is the right time. This is the right people. This is the right situation. I'm paying attention to right timing. I'm in charge of this power that I have. And then you express it, right? Uh, Then it's a superpower. I hope that makes, I hope that makes sense. If not, go ahead and put another question in there. Okay. What else? Kind of at the, um, after the hour, kind of went over, I have one more question for you. There are other questions, but, um, what is motorized again? Motorized is when you have one of those four motors connected to your throat. So like if you have a channel that goes from your emotional solar plexus to your throat, that means your throat will be motorized because you have a motor going to the throat. That's what that means. So if any of the four motors are connected to your throat, then you have a motorized throat. Does that make sense? um okay so angela yeah go ahead cindy um well they're asking specific questions on like we had one my throat and sacral are open and have no gate help so that's actually a superpower for you jody when you learn how to use it okay so if you just go back to what i was saying were the superpowers for the openness so when you have an open sacral Okay, that means when you come around generators and manifesting generators, you get supercharged energy because you pick up on the sacral and you magnify it. Now, let's say you're feeling a little tired. You know, if you can come around a generator or manifesting generator, you can go to a coffee shop, you can go to a park, you can go to a restaurant, um, you can call up a friend. Um, I had a really funny, I was meeting with some other human design specialists yesterday and we were working on a project that we're on and um, somebody asked uh, one of them, you know, why are you here? And she said, because I'm a projector and I want to be around all you generators because I need some extra energy today. Right. And so she picked up on our generator energy and she amplified it and that's going to give her energy for the rest of the day. So that is a superpower for you, provided that you don't get addicted to it. And then you're trying to do it all day, every day, as long as you rest also. It can actually give you even more power than a generator because you're picking up and amplifying it. And I think I talked a lot about the the open throat and what that can give you. So one of the things, who is it that said that? That was Jody. Jody, one of the things I would say to you is go and look at what if you have um if you have you have no gates either okay well then that me so you can look at if you have gates that are moving it in towards the throat from any of the other centers because those are going to tell you a lot about what you're going to be attracted to okay i hope that's helpful to you um so if you have the 4323 as a projector you um are uh you know um uh, a, what we call a mental projector Okay, so you're going to have this. I mean, the the 4323 is awesome because it's plugged directly into super consciousness. But the main thing for you is going to be, again, right timing, because, you know, the insights and the inspirations that can come in through the 4323 can be be extremely leading edge, can be very innovative. And you have to make sure that you're sharing them at the right time. Other pies, that's why we call the 43, the genius freak gate, right? Because if you're sharing it at the wrong time, you're going to sell like a freak. But if you're like, oh, wow, I, I'm going to make sure that I curate this information and I share it at the right time, then people are going to be like, oh my God, you're a freaking genius, right? And that is what you want. Um, I know there's lots of questions, but I think we have to start wrapping it up. have to wrap it up. Okay. You know what? If you um, have more questions, you can go onto the Facebook and put in the comments and I will go over there and I will respond to those um, comments. 
And yes, um, let's see. Yes, I do offer individual readings. You can go to sovereigntybydesign.com forward slash readings and check that out. If you sign up for the program, you'll get a half hour reading with me if you're one of the first seven. Um, and uh, let's see, if there, was there anything else? Oh, Angela, even though you're emotional, that's okay. That just means you're emotionally defined, um, but you still have that, that projected energy coming into your throat. So what I said is still valid, if that makes sense. Okay, so um, thank you, thank you for being here. We do need to wrap up. Please connect with me on Facebook, on my page, which is just Maggie Ostar PhD, or on Instagram, which is Sovereignty by Design. Um, and I do encourage you to join me for this program. If you are interested, you can also shoot me an email if you have questions about it. Okay, so it's sovereigntybydesign.com forward slash superpowers where the registration page is. All right, um, and the recording for this will be up um, and it'll also be up on Instagram. Anything else, Cindy? No, I think that's it. Thank you so much. All right, thanks everybody. Bye for now. <laughs>